So to start off, we have the projector. Now, um, this is the Optoma Full HD 3D projector. It's also uh, capable of mounting onto the roof now. So if you guys want to buy a projector to mount onto the roof, you're going to have to look on the details of each projector now. I really like this projector, it cost me £600, it's the HD131XE from Amazon, there will be a link in the description below as well. Now this is full 3D with 1080p. I've also bought some glasses which were generic from China and they're, they're actually pretty good but every now and then they do go out of sync and so you can see both, both frames of it basically um, to make up the 3D. So next we have the Pioneer uh, amplifier. Now you don't need an amplifier but we wanted the full speaker system that goes at uh, 5.1 surround sound. Now this is capable of things like radio tuner, it has uh, multi HDMI inputs. Uh, it also lets you choose between like if you want to connect your iPod up you can connect that uh, via USB and uh, it'll play the song that you want to choose off your phone. This is a, a really good amplifier. The the one the, the ones that they sell these days, however, they do also have AirPlay built in. Now, I bought mine just before this next generation came out. It cost me about uh, 250 quid, but uh, they can range between uh, 200 and 300 pounds. It doesn't really matter which one you get. All of them are going to be decent enough now uh, you can get Bose ones which cost quite a lot Pioneer seems to do very good ones and in the uh, in the end I'm very pleased with all of it now one thing uh, to remember is that say if you want to switch your input the way to do it is to switch on your amplifier and change the input there instead of actually changing the input on the projector because all the HDMI cables go straight to the amplifier uh, from the projector. Now, uh, talking about HDMI cables, we also did have to buy two or three uh, heavy duty 10 meter, 15 meter HDMI cables to run around the room. These are underneath the carpet, so you can't really see them at all, and uh, I fit them in very well. Now, uh, next we have is the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is one of the modes that I use to, say, watch films on. There's also the Skybox, there's also the Xbox 360 as well. Now, all three of these are, are very capable of being enlarged onto a projector screen. Now, uh, I forgot to tell you that my projector screen itself is 120 inch. Now, um, I'm only getting 115 inch of that because I did my calculations wrong. Um, there's, there's a link in the description below on how to calculate the screen size. So when we first installed the projector, we didn't have any uh, sort of soundproofing or light proofing for the room because it was my living room in the first place and we didn't really want to spend much on it anyway. Now the way we cured the light proofing is that we bought these blackout blinds which um, which cost me about 30-40 quid. Now uh, we wanted to get the suede ones with the chrome railings and overall I think the finish of that looks a lot lot better than um, the ones without the chrome railings on them. The suede finish also gives a nice touch to it and uh, makes the room look good and we also bought brown ones because they matched our room already. So uh, if you guys want to build a cinema room but don't want to sort of like make it into its very own cinema room and into a normal living room you want to make it uh, I'd advise you to get blackout blinds because we had office blinds before and they were they basically let in as much light as as possible basically and uh, so, and these blackout blinds block out like 99% of the light and therefore say in the daytime you can still watch your projector uh, without any problems there's one bad thing about um, having all these things is that there's a lot of remotes to them. Now, there's one for my electronic uh, screen, which goes up and down. There's one for my projector and one for the amp. Now, if you wanted to minimize the number of remotes, you can get an all-in-one remote. However, they do they are quite costly. They do range from about £100 upwards. So, um, I didn't really want to get one of them. Now, uh, the screen pro uh, projector itself, the of the screen, is a 4x3 120 inch screen it cost me 50 pounds from Amazon 
Now, uh, this is fully electronic. I, I decided to get this because I didn't want to have a built-in screen into my wall. I wanted to have it um, come up and down in front of my uh, existing TV. Now, um, this screen works very well. I've had no issues with it at all. The postage uh, came pretty quick, actually, and for the for what you get, I really think it's really worth it to get an electric screen because you get the remote and you can lift it up and down. Um, there we have it, guys. So things to think about when you're installing your own home cinema is firstly the screen size that you want. You're gonna have to measure your room out, and um, there will be a link in the description on how to do this. Uh, and then the next thing is to decide how to um, basically mount everything. We had to buy a few mounts for our projectors, uh, for the projector, and I bought some chains to hang up the uh, the screen itself. Now, make sure you drill these into a beam because that'll keep it up, as the projector is quite heavy itself. And uh, mine seems very sturdy. It hasn't moved out of place. Um, lifting the projector in the air and fitting it was quite a, quite a hassle. It does need two people because you do need someone to hold the projector and then you need someone else to screw it in. So we've also got a cable tidy which runs around the back so you can't see the cables itself which makes it look a lot better. Overall the cinema itself is, is very good and so uh, that's my cheap home cinema guide. It cost me about a thousand pounds and if you like the video please like, comment and subscribe. And also if you have any questions on how I did this, uh, please comment below.